Welcome to another episode of Leon Live. I have the opportunity of connecting with Michael Priztula, who is the Managing Director of Intelligent Digital Workspaces at Accenture and a lovely and delightful person. I've just really enjoyed getting to know you here as we've talked and uh, also connecting with you on LinkedIn. LinkedIn is the world that brings us all together. <laughs> Michael, thank you for taking some time with us today. Leon, it's a pleasure. Thanks for, thanks for having me. I'm excited for the discussion. Yeah, and you know, we, we discovered in the course of just talking that we have some common acquaintances in times past, and uh, it's fun. This industry, doesn't matter when you started, at some point in time, everybody's going to cross paths, it seems like, um, and so here, here we are. Tell um, our viewers today that, you know, a little bit about who you are, what you do, and uh, your world. Yeah, thanks. Thanks, Leon. So yeah, as, as you mentioned, um, I, I lead a practice at Accenture called Intelligent and Digital Workplaces. And basically what uh, what myself and my team do is we help mainly, you know, Fortune 500 organizations um, use technology to improve either the way that their people are, are working. So end user technologies and specifically as it comes to, to workplaces, you know, technology that helps them work inside and outside of the workplace, but then also those people that are charged with operating those spaces and providing those services to people, how we can implement technology to help them serve their customers better, which are ultimately, you know, the people that are coming to the office. Yeah, exactly. I, I think that um, that that is a, a good description of so many different uh, competencies that are required, I think, to manage those spaces today. You have been in this industry for a while um, serving you know, a number of different customers and circumstances. And Accenture is a really a leader, right, in, in the thought process and how to engage those processes with customers. So I, I really appreciate um, your insight. Um, in terms of like what's going on in the world today, you talk about quite a few things that relate to not only the hybrid workplace, but user adoption, um, the processes in particular. What is top of mind for you as you're looking into the space, the industry, uh, with regards to just current trends, you know, what, what kind of right there at the top of the list for you? Yeah, sure. And, and I think, you know, the top of everyone's mind, regardless of, of where you sit on the spectrum of sort of, you know, return to office, return to work, I don't like the term, but, but you know, what, whatever the term is that you want to use for it, uh, it it's organizations are thinking about how they make ultimately their workplaces better and more attractive for people. And, and whether that's to attract them to spend more time there, whether it's to attract them uh, to be able to come in because they feel that people are more productive in the office, uh, but, but or whether it's it's part of you know a recruitment and retention drive, you know there's a lot more focus now since since COVID on how do we make the workplace more attractive, more productive, and uh, ultimately a, a place that people want to spend more time and and feel that they're more productive while they're there. Yeah, certainly in the real estate world, we're seeing a couple of metrics that are staggering. You know, one is, for example, in the city of New York, it, the vacancy rate in commercial real estate is staggering, um, needs to return. We are, you know, well past the end of the pandemic. and We've kind of navigated this. Of course, people will work from home, but we're seeing mandates, but uh, mandates in a different context. There's been the mandate, you better come back or you're going to lose your job. Or the, then there's the mandate that the business needs you back to collaborate. What are some of the, da the data points that have got you um, sort of spinning right now? Yeah, I think there's, there's definitely a number of different, um, let's call it powers at, at play there, right? There's the financial aspect of you know, how much of the economy relies on, on real estate, and especially in, in large cities, the economies of these more commuter cities where people are, are traveling into and they get, you know, a lot more of the business that, that that operates the city based on people that are coming in. You know, New York is is one example, but if you go out to an extreme, you look at what's happening in San Francisco and that's sort of the, you know, right at the end of the scale of, of what happens when people aren't coming back. So there's the financial piece of it and the impact on the business and the impact on the city. But, you know, outside of that, this, I think people have, have come to the conclusion that, yes, you know, work can be done well remotely, but I'm still a huge believer that there's there's this value in relationship and there's value in the collaboration that can be done when people do come together in person. And yeah. that doesn't have to be every day, but providing, you know, office space and an environment that when people do either choose to come together 
or uh, are requested to come together, that that time is valuable. And, you know, we've been using the term for quite some time, you know, make it worth the commute. Yeah. And building these environments that people feel productive in and want to be in is, is you know, at the forefront of everybody's mind. Yeah. Uh, make it worth the com- uh, commute, earn the commute. Um, you know, I think of two words, productive and inspiring. Sometimes they contrapose each other, but they should actually go perfectly together. Um, wh- where do you see it happening well? Where do you see increased productivity and inspiring happening well? Are there good examples out there that you would point to? I mean, there's there's plenty of everybody sort of focused on this now, and and it sometimes it's it's aligning the budgets that people have with what they want to spend, uh, what what they can spend. I think I don't know that there's many people out there that are building spaces now and say, hey, we we want to make it average. Everybody wants to make it great. Everyone wants to make you know inspiring spaces. I think there's still some debate depending on whether you're talking to the real estate owners there seems to be a lot of focus on hey we need to put gyms and we need to put co-working spaces and we need a better coffee shop um you know which ping which one tables. could argue ping pong <laughs> tables I, I don't know i think i think ping pong tables are kind of gone by the wayside now I, I feel that when people are coming to the office again if you're coming in purposefully you're not coming in necessarily to play ping pong you're coming in to get something done yeah and and what i'm seeing is people wanting to invest more money in making sure that you know, those experiences when people do come to the office are valuable. Yeah. Yeah. I think uh, the human impact, the interconnectivity of people, just the dynamic, uh, you know, we have a different time where hybrid has given us a chance not only to like sustain and, and extend our businesses, make the world feel a little smaller, but um, it's also given us different kind of skills when it comes to social interaction. And uh, for the longest time, you know, we we've only had really uh, social interaction to build upon. So, you know, here we are in this time per, you know, period where we're, we're looking for productive and inspiring. And on the inspiring side, there's a number of different ways to address it. You know, we think a lot about art and style um, as inspiring elements. They certainly have been that way for the last 100 years. What do you see uh, when it comes to aesthetic, art, style, or other elements that really drive to, um, you know, Increased productivity and inspiration. I, I think that you know it's it's been it's been this way for, for for millenniums, right? People love inspiring spaces. We love going to places that make us feel, that make us think, that are just you know nice places to be around. And I think that that that's definitely one aspect of it. Is you know how do we build spaces that when when I walk into, I feel inspired and I feel like I can do my best work, I can I can be my best. But I think there's also the other aspect of this is you know, those spaces, how we provide service in those spaces is also just as important. So you know, if you think of yourself in the hospitality industry, right, they've been doing it so well for so many years, you walk into a five-star hotel and it's not just about how the lobby looks, but it's also how you're greeted and how you feel in that space. And I think that's a combination of you know, the way the environment is designed and the service that you're delivered while you're there. Yeah. How does Accenture engage this conversation? You know, how do you guys begin the the journey with a with a client that is, I don't know, maybe starting out or somewhere in the middle of the journey? Yeah, you know, so we do work with a lot of clients, especially when they're going through a construction or a redesign project. Now, hand in hand with, with the architecture uh, organization. So you know, we're, we're not architects, we're not designers, but what we do and the, the aspect that we bring to the table is, you know, that digital experience or the digital aspect to that, which is becoming just as important, we believe now, is it's it's not just what happens when I walk into the space and how does it look, but how does it feel and operate from a digital perspective, right? How do I find my way around? How do I find the people that I'm working with? How does the, the, the digital... Um, digital landscape, whether it be signage or kiosks and things like that, fit into the traditional, you know, architecture and design of the space. And so it's that merger of the physical and the digital coming together. Yeah. What's a trap? What's a trap? What's a, uh, you know, you're heading down the road. At, oh, wait, that's shiny object. I mean, is there a few areas that you say, beware of that turn? <laughs> 
No, definitely. You know, I, as I said, we work we work together with architects quite often. Uh, one of the, the things that we see still continuing to happen is, you know, there's an amazing space that's designed. You know, the architecture is beautiful. The design's beautiful. The fabrics are beautiful. The walls are beautiful. And there's just a spot that's left on the diagram that says, put the kiosk here or put a sign here. And there's there's no... There's no integration around how could that digital experience, that digital display or or the, the check-in kiosk or that piece of technology, how is it integrated into the bigger picture? It's sort of yeah. left to the last minute. And so you know, that's the trap that I see too often is the architects go through, they design an amazing space. And once they've finished, it's given over to the tech team. It's like, now go bolt your stuff onto the wall here. And it's like, well... There's a, we could have done this so much better if we did it together. So, you know, working in partnership, we think is, is key to success. It is a theme of the, of the, of the time and the industry. I, I can't tell you how often I hear if we were engaged sooner, we could have, or boy, if we brought you in sooner, we could have. So what's a practical, um, a practical piece of advice around engaging sooner? Um, what are some things that should, that you would you know give somebody some tips on and said here's a practical and useful way to engage sooner? Yeah, I think that you know when you're going through those early visioning sessions around you know what does the space look like, what is it, how does it operate, what does the floor plans look like, having somebody from that digital lens involved in that that process, that working group, those workshops. To be able to to bring that that angle to the table, you know, that's where our or our, our clients get the most value from us is being part of those discussions and being able to you know, be there from the original concept of the space all the way through to the execution of the space. Because the other thing that we find is that you come up with a great design and a great concept to start with, and as things get value engineered through the process, sometimes those things get get left yeah. out because people that aren't involved in the technology don't necessarily know why certain things are in there and they they disappear and then you go to use them at the end of like oh that thing's disappeared or the wrong camera was installed or there's no longer an ethernet port in this wall but nobody knew why it was there so they took it out right? yeah yeah that's a great point and and there's there's pride in the final deliverable and uh you know sometimes the trade off on the pride doesn't really you know bleed into the user experience which is what I hear you saying. It's like the overall experience, everything really needs to come together. It needs to work seamlessly. And um, and it, and if we get it right, it can be inspiring and productive. Oh, completely. I mean, people want yeah. to come into these spaces and walk in and go, you know what? Working in the office is easy, right? I get there. I'm comfortable. I know how to get things done. You know, we can use technology today to proactively help so many people. So it's like, hey, if I need help with something or I don't know how to do something or I need to find out what time, you know, the hot food's going to be sold in the cafeteria. You know, those types of things are easy for me to access, whether it's on a mobile app or whether it's on digital signage or whether it's, you know, through an email that gets sent out. But that that experience in the office is just so easy that I feel like when I go there, I can do my best. I can be my best. And it's not fight it's not i'm struggling to get things done when i'm there we want it to be easy and be able to provide that environment that people feel they can do their best work in yeah that's great great insight so everybody michael's a keynote speaker he is a managing director at accenture he's got a wealth of background experience if somebody wanted to connect with you to learn more about what you're up to and doing possibly engage you in a project how would they how would they connect with you yeah, so Leon, uh, LinkedIn is the best place to, to get in touch with me. Um, Michael Prestrul, you can find me there. Um, or if you want to uh, listen in to more, I, I also host a podcast called Creating Smarter Spaces. And you can go check out the, uh, the website there at uh, smarterspaces.life. Awesome. Thank you, Michael. It's been great to be with you today. If you just hang for a second, we'll uh, go to, uh, back, to, uh, back to, the, uh, to the next part.